Some content this week I can't wait to get started with you we're gonna go through a little bit of code and then I'm gonna show you something really cool that I developed for anybody to use so we're gonna get right into it from the last video we did have the data frame of bonds PAs but I made a CSV file that way you don't have to rerun all the previous code from the previous video so how we do that in terms of loading in files we'll select a we'll call a data frame called bonds PAs We'll do read.csv to read the CSV file that I made, bonds, PAs, that CSV. Make sure it's in your working directory. Um, a good way to get your working directory is run the command get wd, and that's where you should put the CSV file that you downloaded from my GitHub page into that working directory so you can download it and run it in R. So we'll do read CSV, bonds, PA, CSVs, and then we don't want our strings as factors. That way we can accurately remove uh, strings and manipulate the data. So run that. Works just fine. We can view it by viewing bonds, PAs. You can see it's already there. Now what we're going to do is create another data frame, but this time we're going to create it as a tibble. The reason why I want to create it as a tibble because it gives you a column name of value. And that's a lot easier than getting a column name of a period, something along those lines. So we'll say pitch type, and we'll say as tibble, bonds, PAs, and then that column called... pitch count so PIT period CNT and so we'll run that and we'll have one column of pitch type so we can again view it I will say I forgot to mention make sure you have the correct packages loaded in like I said run library um, tidyverse is the package to get tibbles um, you don't need a special package to read CSV, so run tidyverse first. And then a lot of the rest of this code is mostly from tidyverse in terms of stringer or uh, base R code, which you don't really need a package for. So first we're going to get started by looking into the pitch type and seeing we want these uh, values like CBX, X, BB, B, F, B, similar to the video. Um, you will see what video I'm talking about later, but we only want those, so we want to remove these. So, quick and easy way to do that is first we'll create a G sub, which is basically a regular expression substitute. And so we'll create a new column that says code. We'll do a G sub and then we'll do a period asterisk parentheses and then blank and we'll say pitch type value. So pitch type value. And essentially what this is doing is we are um, replacing everything that be comes before this parentheses symbol with nothing uh again if you want to look up why we do this just hit question mark and then rejects which is regular expression and it should pull up um over here to uh let you know you know why what the certain functions are for pulling things so on and so forth so we'll run this then we'll go into other things like punctuation and digits, removing those, so on and so forth. And we can see in the viewer pane over here on the right, we can see what exactly the retro sheet codes were. So there are some unusual symbols like the forward arrow, plus sign, and asterisk, a period. So how we're going to get rid of that is simply moving, removing all punctuation and then removing all digits again with the G sub. So we'll run this and we'll see 
that it's all gone. Great. Moving forward. Now we're going to see what kind of strings that match these retro sheet codes to allow us to see what exactly what Barry Bonds did. By calling the stringer package, we can write efficient code by saying sum string count and we'll do we'll kind of group these together so we'll say pitch type code and again we can do what string we want we want one or two the uh, vertical line means or in this case one or two or three and then we'll run this and we'll see that there are no instances where there's a pickoff throw in this retro sheet data and then we'll again run it for various things like uh, let's check on foul bunt and we'll see what exactly if there if any did Barry Bonds have a foul bunt so again pitch type code and then this time we want L we'll hit some and wow Barry Bonds had a foul bunt according to retro sheet so i'm actually going to go through this and see where exactly we uh have a foul bunt so you can go on the data frame original data frame of bonds pas and go into pitch count just type l and you see against eric gagne on april 16th 2004 now i'm going to go check and see if there's a video available and see if barry bonds actually bunted did find the YouTube video thanks to user Ryan Schwark of the at bat where apparently it says that Barry Bonds foul bunted against Eric Gagne. Okay, first pitch is right, fouls it off. All right, that makes sense. But now here's where the second pitch comes in. Apparently, according to Retro Sheet, he fouled off this with a bunt. Uh, that. That's not a bunt. That's what I thought. Barry Bonds hits dingers. Stays two and two. See? Stay told you. Bonds hits hit. dingers. He doesn't bunt. So now that we know that Barry Bonds does not bunt and hits dingers instead, we are going to replace or at least count other strings that fit the retro sheet pattern. So how we do that? Some string count, pitch type code. And then uh, each of the strings with the vertical line to indicate or and we'll see that there are none there so then now we'll replace the code of L to a C so how you do that simply is string replace with the stringer package pitch type code and then replace the L to a C And to check that, we can filter by code and type in L, and there's no matching records found. So it did work. Then we'll quickly add ball and strike probability. So how we do that is we'll do a round so we have three decimal points. And then we'll count the strike probability known as S-prob by calling the strikes divided by the balls plus strikes. And then same for balls as well. So we'll run this. And we can see... And when we view Bonds BVS, we can see that in 2004, his ball probability was 59.5% and 40.5% of strikes based on retro sheet data. Now I'm setting variables up for this uh, simulation. Um, right now I have balls and strikes set as zero and then J set as one. And then I have an outcomes data frame that will print out the outcome of each plate appearance that Barry Bonds had in 2004. So now we're going to build the loop that allows us to print the code that we need to run to see what Barry Bonds' on-base percentage would be without a baseball bat in R. So we'll say repeat, and we'll say result. We'll call it result. We'll do a sample. We'll do a combine element to indicate what we want to sample, which are balls and strikes. And then we just want one at a time. 
you'll see shortly why. And then replace equals true because we want to be able to use balls and strikes. And then now we're going to set probabilities, which is combine bonds, ball versus strikes, ball probability, since we indicated balls first. And then bonds BVS to indicate from the data frame. And then we'll say strike probability. So that sets our sample. Now we're going to create, within it, we're going to create a for loop. So essentially what we're doing is looping through each of the balls and strikes until a four balls uh, or three strikes appear. And we're going to print out that result in that data frame outcome. So how we do that is well, for i and 1 to the length of bonds BVS PAs and then a squiggly bracket again and we'll do another one where it says if J equals bonds BVS PAs plus one so that way we correctly get 617 plate appearances and then another squiggly bracket. And now we'll do a return element and a print. So return, print, then a paste zero. So essentially we're going to print out what Barry Bonds' uh, OBP would be. So Bonds, BVS, player to indicate Barry Bonds. Then we'll say comma, uh, quotation marks and we'll have a space that way it's space it's spaced out so then it said would have an OBP of another space and then this is where we'll get uh, a bit of a dense code where we'll say round sum string count outcomes of the outcomes data frame the outcome and we want to count the amount of walks in that data frame and then divided by create another parenthesis bonds BVS PAs and then to continue with that on we want three decimal points for the code then We'll continue on another quotation marks with the space so that way it is spaced out correctly without a baseball bat in another space bonds bvs year add the period then we'll do another comma and do quotation marks another space to space it out his actual OBP in space bonds BVS year was and then bonds BVS OBP and then we'll create a else if and how we achieve that simply is else if result equals with the double equals sign to indicate that's exactly what we want if result equals ball balls equal balls plus one all right and then Another else if, and same for strikes. Result equals strikes. Strikes equals strikes plus one. And then lastly, we'll create a 
reset count statement. So if ball is equal four, we'll assign the variable j this time. So we'll say outcomes j. And the reason why we put the commas there is we want that row of j to indicate walk. And then furthering on, reset the count. So strikes equals zero, balls equals zero. And then j equals j plus one. And then same for strikes, so else if, so on and so forth. Three strikes. Outcomes dot j equal we'll say so for a strikeout and then reset the count strikes equal zero balls equal zero j equals j plus one. So we'll run through this loop I saw before I ran the code I typed in probs it should be just prob. So make sure instead of this saying probs, it should be prob. And then we'll run this. And it says Barry Bonds would have an OBP of 527 without a baseball bat in 2004. His actual OBP was 609. And another way to check that or to see um, outcomes, we can see the list of all the outcomes by calling outcomes in the script. And it ran through and selected... 617 plate appearances, assigning a walk or a strikeout. Pretty cool, right? Um, this is actually, you can use this for um, maybe projecting hitters for next year using uh, the probabilities of each outcome. Uh, it's definitely a useful tool to run repeat loops. The fun part is I created a web application that states, what if a specific player had played without a baseball bat? And it's under this URL right here. It will be in the description in the link. It's my name, shinyapps.io, without a bat. So we can input Barry Bonds and then the strike percentage from the retro sheet and just fill in these inputs and we can run this, hit submit. Barry Bonds would have an OBP of 554 without a baseball bat in 2004. His actual OBP in 2004 was 609. Like I said, this video is inspired by John Boy of SB Nation. Uh, feel free to check out the video, highly recommend it. So much fun to see it. This is the inspiration behind this uh, web app. And uh, of course, this OBP is assuming that the pitchers don't know it, he doesn't have a bat. So they would throw the pitches that they would normally throw. Now another way to do this, you can do, is you can go on Fangraphs, we'll type in Mike Trout, because Mike Trout's the greatest, and we'll pick one of his seasons. So we'll say 2016, where he had a 441, OBP, 681, plate appearances. So we'll say 681, and we'll say 441, 2016, um, change this to Mike Trout, and then we'll go down, and like I said, like I mentioned, uh, you can use the zone percentage under the player's fan graph page under the plate discipline section. Uh, that's the amount of strikes that were thrown in the zone of that year, so 42.3. So just type it in here, three decimal places, so 0.423, and then we'll hit submit. And Mike Trout would have had an OBP of 483 without a baseball bat in 2016. His actual OBP in 2016 was 441. And we can go on into another person, so let's say Vladdy Jr., because again, Vladdy Jr. is popular, so Vladdy Jr. down here, click on his name. And uh, we'll say from 2019, so he had 514 plate appearances, a 339 on base percentage, so 514, and we'll say 339, and we'll say, I'll just, I'll just call him Vladdy Jr. No, I'll, I'll make it full name. So Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in 2019, and then we can scroll down to his plate discipline 
can see in the zone 0 0.378, 37.8%. We'll run it. And he, Vladimir Guerrero would have had an OBP of 599 without a baseball bat. His actual OBP was 339. Isn't that just amazing? I love this so much. It was such a joy creating this. Please check out the link and watch it. Watch it. Watch the uh, Barry Bonds video of John Boys. Huge credit to him um, for this inspiration. This video will be literally of this video to help you uh, how to run that app. And again, go on this link. Use as much as you want. I created it for you all. And have fun with it. You can do any player that has uh, data. You can go through the zone percentage as a quick way. Or you can go through balls and strikes on the fan graphs page. Another way is, again, pulling through those that retro sheet data that I showed you in a previous video. I will make a disclaimer. Um, since it goes through probabilities and assigns a ball or strike for every plate appearance until a walk or strikeout is reached, not every time you run through a player it will be the same probability or the same on base percentage fair warning thanks for watching feel free to like and subscribe